And with winning formula coming up a little later, we will be making a case. However, it's not for Keenum. But first, Wabi, Vikings.com, Ron Johnson, Fox 9's Vikings Game Day Live. Let's get into some Minnesota Vikings topics into this game against the Falcons. First, the Vikings offensive line affectionately is known courtesy of the Vikings Radio Network as the Minnesota Moving Company. So we begin with you, Ron. Who is the best performer this season on the Minnesota Moving Company? I would say three guys, Elfline, Easton, and Berger, but I'm going to go with Elfline. Okay. I'm going to yeah. narrow it in. You're I'm going to take, take all three from you. We don't have a three-way dead heat so here, I'm gonna man. Go, I'm going to go Elfline. The okay. reason being is Whoa. last year, six, guy. 64% yeah, right. true. 64% of the runs were up the middle last year, and they were 31st. This year, the same 64% of the runs are up the middle, and now they're second, fifth, 14th, and 13th in all the run categories. 13th and second level runs, which shows Elf line getting down the field, helping out, team blocking, getting to the linebackers. And I mean, Latavius and Jet are, you know, smooth sailing until they get to DB. So I got to give to Elf line. He had some good numbers. I don't want to take anything away from Mr. Elf line. He's a rookie. He's in a communications function as well as having to perform against some of the better interior defenders in the NFL. So mm -hmm. I do give him a lot of credit. So I'm going to go with a guy that might be the most irreplaceable, Riley Reef. Right. Also a big tenor for you, Ron. Yeah. How many sacks this season is Riley Reef allowed? None. Zero. <laughs> Knock on wood. Don't jinx it today against Adrian Claiborne. All right, next one. Julio Jones, 253 and two against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We need some creative ways to handle Julio Jones. Can we untie his shoes? Yeah, I'd like to start there. <laughs> or you can just put Xavier Rhodes on him. Right. And that's all you have to do. That's and it. We are to that point with Xavier Rhodes. He is an eraser and he will stop Julio Jones in this game as he's done the last two times he has played him. Mike Zimmer is not gonna leave Xavier alone on him every snap. But the vast majority of the time, I think he will, and that's going to be good enough. What's the best way to handle number 11? I like that. 2016, Julio Jones, week four, 300 yards receiving. The next week, 29 yards. 2014, huh. week 14, 259 yards receiving. The next week, zero. Wow. Huh. So he does not follow up big games with another big game. He finds a way to just have a letdown. I don't know if it's a hangover mm -hmm. from the big game. All the ESPN, everybody's all up on him and kissing his butt and saying how great you are. He might be reading his headlines too much because he's never followed up a 250-yard-plus th game with another big game. And but Xavier Rose is a big part of that. Well, you want to know who was not getting their butt kissed this past week? Oh. Xavier Rose. Right. After giving up a few to Marvin Jones. Yeah, right. So he's going to be sharp. Zimmer probably got into him a little bit this week. He's going to be sharp. And I, I don't mean to be um, too over the top. I mean, Julio Jones is really good. I mean, yeah. Tampa Bay knew that Matt Ryan was going to throw to him, and they couldn't stop it. Right. So um, I do give him a lot of respect, but I just want to hammer home the point that with Xavier, he yep. is the guy yep. that just shuts you down. And I will say this, though. Yeah. The next game when he only had 29 yards, Coleman had 139. So for some reason, I think Matt Ryan, when he dials in on a guy and that guy's hot, he right. keeps going to him the whole game. Will the fans freak out if the Vikings lose today? Yeah, <laughs> they will. For one week only, though. Um, I mean, maybe look, one day only, though. May, maybe. Look, I mean, fans freak out about the power rankings. Like, I think ESPN has us fifth and the Rams yeah, third, and I'm getting emails yeah, about yeah, that. Which so, is dumb. Um, that's okay. But that's that's the beauty of being a fanatical, a fan, is you get to care so much about something yeah. that you will freak out over one loss. Yes, they will, until the next Sunday when we play Carolina. So you think these fans will have the audacity to freak out if the Vikings lose to Atlanta, which Vikings game plan has learned was in the Super Bowl last year? I am going to agree with Wabi on that. I think fans here just are negative and they're waiting for the other shoe to drop. But And you do Vikings fan line on KFAN. Yeah, so that's the wine line if they lose. But I'm going to, I wish there was some elevated music they could play because I want to look you fans in the eye and tell you. <laughs> don't panic. Even if they lose two, the next three games are the Packers, the Bengals, and the Bears. 12 and 4 still wins the division. Every other team has five losses or more. They win the division, regardless if they lose the next two games to the Panthers wow. and the Falcons. It's not going to happen, though. But just relax. Calm down. We do love you, though. You know this team has won seven consecutive when Main Man shows up with a fresh bow tie. Yes. And it's not a clip-on. It's fantastic. Well done. Last one. We mentioned earlier we will be making a case for something, but it's not the quarterback Case Keenum. It's Vikings head coach Mike Zimmer. So we begin here. Make a case for Mike Zimmer as NFL Coach of the Year. Easy. Jason Garrett, 13 and 3. Ron Rivera, 15 and 1. Bruce Aarons, 11 and 5. I could go on and on and on. Every coach that won Coach of the Year improved the next year. Yeah. Had nothing to do with wins. But one thing to think about 
only one coach in the last 20 years, or two coaches in the last 20 years have won the Super Bowl when they've won coach of the year. So we might not want Mike to get that because we want the Super Bowl. But yes, easily done. Last year, eight and eight. This year, already surpassed the eight wins. He is coach of the year. The low hanging fruit is to point at the team's record and the fact that they have done that without Sam Bradford and without Dalvin Cook. But mm -hmm. let's take the conversation a step further and actually talk about things that Mike Zimmer wanted to improve on going into 2017. Yeah. He wanted to be better at protecting the passer, yeah. at running the ball, at stopping the run, and in critical areas. And in red zone offense, which, knock on wood, is off the charts. Critical areas. How are we doing in all of those? All right. We're a top five rushing team, or top ten rushing team. We are number one in fewest sacks allowed. As PA has just referenced, we are on fire in the red zone, and I don't know that there's a better run defense in the NFL right now. Yeah. Those are the areas that Mike Zimmer wanted to get better at in the offseason, and he did it. If you're jumping on that midnight train to Georgia, travel safely. Hopefully the Vikings can beat the Atlanta Falcons. For Wabi from Vikings.com and Ron Johnson from Fox 9's Vikings Game Day Live, I'm Paul Allen. Thank you for watching Vikings Game Plan.